Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my How to Make Video Games tutorial. What we're going to do over the course of a bunch of videos is we're going to make the game Pong, and then I'm going to make a whole bunch of other different games, but I thought Pong is perfect because with Pong, I'll be able to teach you the Unity 5.6 interface. I'll be able to show you how to set up everything. We'll be able to talk about cameras and sprites and scenes and physics and how to get input from the keyboard and joystick, how to handle collision detection, ricochets, sound effects, user interfaces, splash screens, music, a whole bunch of different things. And I'm going to try to keep this into bite-sized videos so I don't overwhelm anybody out there. You don't really need any real programming experience. Of course, a little bit of knowledge in C Sharp would help. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to take a look at my C-sharp video, but you don't really need it. And like always, all the code is going to be available in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing you need, of course, is Unity, and I'm using the free personal version of Unity. It's super awesome. And you just click on that and install it, and everything's the same, whether you are on Mac OS or you are on Windows. Everything I do here is going to work on either operating system. And then after you get Unity installed, you're going to want to open it up, of course. And you can see here are a whole bunch of different applications I'm working on. And you just click on New. And then I am going to call this guy Pong2. So I'm just going to come up here and Pong2. And it's going to be a 2D application. And you can have this enable Unity Analytics on or off or whatever you want it to be. And then here's where you're going to store all of this information. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Pong2 as well and create and then click on open. And then you're going to click on create project. All right. So over here is going to be your scene area. And these are all the different tools that are going to allow you to manipulate the scene. You can see the hand tool allows me to move everything around over there. This guy here is going to be what you're mainly going to be using, especially with two-dimensional development. And the scene is going to be where you take things from your hierarchy, which are going to be game objects, like we're creating Pong in this tutorial. So it's going to be things like our paddles and our balls and our walls. Those things are going to be in the hierarchy. And if you, whatever it, uh, is in your scene area is automatically going to show up in the hierarchy. And as you can see right now, all we have is our camera and we'll be doing all kinds of different things with that. So the hierarchy is whatever game objects you have drug into your scene area. Okay, that's all that is. Then you'll have the main game down here, and this is where you can test as you are coding everything. And I always have maximize on play selected. It's up to you rather than playing around that little screen. Over here in your project window is going to be where all your folders are and all the assets you're going to be using. And then those assets are going to have properties which will show up in your inspector and you can also have the console window open to test for any type of errors that are occurring and so forth and so on now the very first thing i like to do here i'll click on the camera just so you can see that see there's properties over here and why don't i jump over and actually show you the finished pong game just so you can see exactly what's what you can expect from this tutorial Okay, so here's the Pong game we'll have at the end, and there's the loading screen. And there you can hear the sounds and how they change. And you can see also the score changed over in the top screen. Oh, you see it's changed a whole bunch of times now. And there it goes. And I'm controlling the guy on the left side. And then the AI is, being, is the control paddle on the right side. And you can see it's pretty good and works pretty much exactly the way that I wanted it. Now we're going to jump over and we'll start creating it. All right, so you saw the finished game. Now what I'm going to do is while I'm inside of here in the camera section, as you saw, the background was black and I want to make my ba background black as well. So I clicked on that and whenever I did, this guy popped up and I'm just going to grab these little guys down here and move them down until they are black. All right, so there you can see, I just drug these little arrows down. All right, so now our background is black and you can see the game is right here, but the scene is unaffected, which is a good thing. Another thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to change the sizing on my camera so that I can have everything all set up here and so everything lines up well. So I'm just going to set this to 40. I'm not going to get into the specifics of everything here right now because we don't need that. You'll just get overwhelmed. So just set that to 40. Everything's going to work. Basically what that means, just to give you a rough overview, is it's going to, the size is going to represent one half of the vertical size for our camera view. 
and tweaking and playing around with things, 40 worked out here. So now what I want to do is I want to keep everything nicely organized. And in the project area, that's where you're going to have everything be organized. So I want to create a whole bunch of folders. So I'm going to go create folder and just put some things in here like you're going to want. So you're going to have scenes. Now, what are scenes? Well, your splash screen. Whenever your game first starts and it opens up and it shows the name of your game and then the creator and it might play some background music or whatever, that's going to be one scene. Another scene is going to be your actual game, like you saw the game being played. There's another scene. So you're going to divide your game up into different scenes to keep everything organized. I'm going to create some more here. Let's go. What else are we going to need? Well, we're going to need sounds. Those are going to be sound effects and music and things like that. What else are we going to need? We're going to need sprites. Those are going to be your graphics. You may need, in this game probably not, but you may need something called a prefab. And you use prefabs. This might be confusing. If it is, don't worry about it. But basically, let's say you had, uh, well, you had multiple rackets, multiple balls, uh, things like that, multiple things in the Pong game. Let's, what a prefab would allow you to do is to have multiple things in your hierarchy, but actually because those game objects basically do the same thing, we want to save them into our prefab folder, and that would allow us to basically change multiple different things that are in the game all in one place. Don't worry about it if that's confusing. Um, I don't even think I'm going to cover prefabs in this part of the tutorial anyway. So we'll get into that later on. What else could we need? So we have scenes, we have sounds, we have sprites. Ah, oh, scripts. To make our game objects actually do things, we are going to write scripts. And those are going to be C-sharp programs that are going to allow us to interact with our game objects. So there you go. I have all that organized. And those are going to be all the different types of things we're going to have in our game. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go and actually create my sprites for my Pong game. Okay, so I'm going to do this in Photoshop, but you'll be able to do this in a whole bunch of different programs. Actually, I have a whole bunch of them down here. And if you want me to do pixel art and other things, just ask me. So you could use GIMP, you could use um, eSprite, you could use whatever you can create a ping file in, that'll work. But I'm going to use Photoshop for right now. So I need to create th these different files. So I'm going to go new and I'm going to come in and okay, so I have this set for one and one. That's what my ball is going to be. My ball is going to be a one and uh, one pixel by one pixel thing and the resolution doesn't matter and that's all perfectly fine. So I'm going to click on OK. So there you go. You got a one pixel by one pixel ball. I'm then going to come in and create some more stuff. I'm going to create a pat our paddles. So I'm going to go call this paddle and our paddles are going to be a width of two pixels and a height of four pixels and click on OK and let's go and create some more things uh, new and we're going to need a horizontal wall and our horizontal walls are going to be have a width of 50 by two that sounds OK Click on OK. Of course, you're going to tweak all this stuff over time. File new. And you're also going to need your vertical walls. So there's a vertical wall. And let's just go and have this be the opposite. So we'll say 2 by 50. So let's say our, our Pong game is going to be roughly you know, a square or whatever. Click on OK. All right, so we got all those all set up. Now what I'm going to do is just going to go select all, edit, and I'm going to come down here to fill. And I'm going to fill those with white. So just basic white like that and click on OK. So I'm going to do that with all of these. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to edit, fill, and white. And the paddle, edit, fill, and white. And the ball, edit, fill, and white. Fill and white. It's a pretty simple stuff. And then I want to save all these things. So I'm going to say save as, and here is the folder. I'm going to put them in my Pong Sprites folder. This is completely outside of Unity, and that all looks good. It has it set as save as copy. Don't want that. And I'm going to click on save. That's good. So I got my ball saved. Let's go to the paddle file, save as, and we'll change this to that. Let's shut off the as copy part right there and click on save. So we have the paddle set up. Whoop, make sure this is like that. Okay, good. Horizontal wall, file, and save. And there's horizontal wall ping. Make sure as copy shut off and click on save and interlace none. And then we'll do this for our vertical wall. File, save as, vertical wall, shut off the as copy, and then click on save. So anything that saves as a ping file, we're gonna use. All right, so all our images are all set up. 
and now let's go and drag them over into Unity. So you can see right here, I have all the different sprites I just created, and here's also my sound effects. So there's a whole bunch of sound effects and sprites. And I will put the sound effects on uh, in the description. There will be a link to the code as well as all the sound effects. And, and I'll also throw the, the pictures inside of there. So everybody will be happy. All right, so I want to get all of these sprites and drag them and put them in my sprites folder. And they should be in there now. So sprites. And you can see there's ball horizontal wall paddle and vertical wall. Everything looks good. And let's go and get our sound effects as well. So I'm going to have my gold bloop and my hit paddle bloop and my loss buzz and a whole bunch of different things. So I'm just going to select all those different guys. And I'm going to drag them and drop them in my sounds folder. Okay, so they'll all go in there and everything will be wonderful. All right, good. And if I click on sounds, you're going to be able to see they all show up. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff going on here, looking pretty good. Now I want to set up my sprites so that they are looked upon as one pixel being one, pic one unit inside of our game. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to select my sprites. So I'm going to select all of them, so like that. There you go, all selected, and I'm going to come over here. And what I want to do is I want to have pixels per unit. So I want one pixel to be looked upon as one pixel unit inside of our game. So change that to one and click on enter. And the only other thing I want to change here is the filter mode. I want them to look like pixels. So I'm going to change this to point. So that means as they are zoomed in on, they're going to have the rough edge of a pixel. You know, they're going to be blocks. And then after that, I'm going to come down here and click on apply. All right, so now we got all of our images all set up perfectly well. Now what I need to do is actually drag these guys over onto our screen and everything all line up good there. So I'm actually just going to grab a horizontal wall and drag it over into my scene area and I'm going to drop it. So roughly in the middle. And I'm going to get another horizontal wall and I'm going to drag it in here and I'll worry about lining it up later and drop it. And then I'm going to get a vertical wall. And then the way I want these to be set up is I want them to overlap each other. So, whoops, let's zoom in here. Let's grab a little hand so you can see. These are going to be overlapping. So click on this guy, see, there you are. And I'm gonna sort of drag him so that they overlap. And, you know, it's not dead on perfect, but it's pretty good. You normally are going to be doing things like selecting horizontal wall and playing with the positions and so forth. But I'm just trying to keep it a little bit simple here because this is a Pong game and just a beginning tutorial for now. Okay, grab the hand and move that over there and grab this guy whoops let's grab this guy and let's move him down so that he is roughly in the right position we're going to make sure this is as close as possible so that whenever there are collisions and things like that that we don't have any problems and we need another vertical wall we're going to drag that in and we're going to drop it right like that move it up up move it right there all right so now we got our walls set up and what we're going to want to do now is let's have our walls set up so that it's in the center of our camera but i can just come in here and select them like that all right so i got it and now all of them are in the center of the screen so there you go we have all our walls set up for us to be able to work with here well, now I need to give them names so that they actually make sense. So let's select this guy up here and I am going to give him or rename him uh, wall top and that's good. And then this is going to be select that guy wall bottom. And then this is going to be, this is going to actually be a goal in the Pong game whenever they click, hit the ball there. So this is gonna be left goal, and this is going to be right goal, and there we are. Now, if I want the balls and the paddles and things like that to work properly in my game world, you can also right click on your scene and drag it around. You don't have to use the hand thing. Um, if I want these to basically handle collisions on their own with balls and paddles and things, I can just select all of them and then come over here and click on add component, physics 2D, and what are they? They're rectangles, they're boxes. So I'm gonna use a box collider and there you go. It works. That's all I needed to do to make those handle collisions. So pretty cool stuff. And now I wanna set up my paddles. 
So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab a paddle and I'm just going to drop it right about there. And I'll go and get another paddle and bring it in here and drop it. So there you go. We got two paddles on our screen. Now it makes sense for me to come in and give them good names. So I'm going to have this. You can see right here it's selected. See, it's a little bit hazy. I'm going to call this left paddle. So let's just go in and go left paddle. And that's a good name. And this one's going to be the right paddle. So look at that. And right paddle. Okay, so left and right paddle are all set up. These guys are also going to have colliders on them. You can see also if you double click on those that it sort of zooms. So I don't want it to zoom right now. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to select that. And I want the paddles to be able to collide with things and do cool things. So I'm going to click on add component, physics 2D. And these are also boxes. So I want those to be box colliders. And that's all I need to do with that. The only other thing I really need to do uh, with, since I am going to be moving these paddles around on a screen, is I need to add another component, which is called a rigid body. You add rigid body components whenever you want to be able to move things. So I'm going to add rigid body on those, and those are both selected. I'm going to change them in exactly the same way. So we have to think about some different things that we want for these. So one thing is we want no gravity because we don't want the paddles to be moving on their own and falling down off the screen. That would be a nightmare. So we're going to set our gravity to zero. We also are not going to want them to rotate. We want them to stay straight up and down. So we want to freeze the rotation in regards to that. We want collision detection to be continuous so that we catch all that. And I'll get more into this later. Basically, this is just going to make our physics exact. So I'm gonna change that to interpolate. And now what I need to do as the last part of this tutorial for now is I'm going to set it up so that you can see how we can accept input from the keyboard as well as joysticks to move just the left paddle around. This is going to be AI controlled. This is going to be controlled by us. What we're gonna to need to do is create a script. So we're gonna go into our scripts folder, create C sharp script, and we are going to call this guy move paddle because that's what it's going to do. So let's go and create it and we'll double click on it. And you can see the guy opens up here oh, looking nice. So this is mono develop what I'm using here. Uh, you could use Visual Studio. You can use whatever you want to do. All right. So this is just a class that represents how we are going to be able to move our paddles around on the screen. And what you need to think about here is just an object just like anything else. So what are we going to want to uh, do in regards to moving our paddle? Well, we're going to want to be able to move it at different speeds. So we're going to go public and float and speed. And I'm going to have my speed set at 30 just as a default. And is there anything else going to want to do with this? Not as far as I know. All right, so we have a paddle that's going to move at the default speed of 30. And since it's set as public, that is going to allow us to change it inside of Unity and tweak it and play around with it until we get it exactly the way we want it. Now let's get into what these functions do. Now basically, whenever a paddle is going to be created, it is going to call the start function at the very beginning of that creation it's going to initialize or set up things. And then it's not going to be called ever again. The update function, on the other hand, is let's say you have a 60 frames per second game. It is going to be called every single time the frame changes. So that's a good thing. However, we're not going to need either one of these guys because we're going to be using something called fixed update. Why are we using fixed update? Basically, fixed update is going to be called just like update does every single time a frame is called. However, since we are using the rigid body to move this guy around on the screen, move the paddle around on the screen, in those situations, you use fixed update instead of just simply update. So we were going in here and we were doing it. So we'll go fixed update. And there's that, and there's this. 
drop that over there. And if we want to be able to get input from the keyboard or a joystick, we're going to be calling a function called get axis raw. So we are going to go float and we're going to be getting a vertical press because our paddles only move up and down. So we're going to go call that vertical press. I don't know, call it whatever you want to call it. And to get whether they are pushing on a button that goes up or goes down, we would then go input and get axis raw. And what we are specifically interested in is the vertical movement uh, commands. So that's what we're gonna put inside of there. And what this is going to get assigned in regards to a value is if they press W on the keyboard or up on, you know, like the up button on the keyboard, it is going to get a value of one. If they press S or, or, or the down button on the keyboard, it's gonna get a value of negative one. And if they press nothing, it's gonna get a value of zero. All right, and we're gonna react differently depending upon what they are pressing. Then what I want to do is I want to change the velocity of the paddle to be in the direction of, you know, what they're pressing on the keyboard. Now, what I want to be able to do is I want to use the rigid body component to change the velocity and the direction of my paddle. And how I do that is I go get component like that and then rigid body, and this is going to be tied to the paddle. So it's going to know that I want the rigid body, you know, that's already been attached to, the pa to our paddle that we have on our screen. So we go rigid body 2D and velocity, and to set its velocity, I just go like this, and then I give it a direction, and it's going to be a direction in the Y, on the Y axis, or up and down. So I'm gonna go vector two, and I'm not moving in the X direction, so I put a zero right there. And then I'm gonna go vert press. So pretty simple stuff. And then I just multiply that times speed. So if I get a value of negative one and my speed is 30, well, it's gonna move down. And if I get a value of one, it's gonna move up, okay? So it's pretty simple stuff. All right, so there we go. So we just set it up so that we will be able to move our racket around on the screen. Now I'm going to jump over into Unity and I'm going to show you how we accept input from keyboards as well as our joysticks. Okay, we are back over inside of Unity. I have Move Paddle already set up. Let's go and set that up actually. So I'm going to select the left paddle here. Remember, the right paddle is going to be AI controlled. Um, the left paddle is going to be me controlled. So I'm going to get move paddle and I'm going to drag the script over here and just drop it on there. All right. So that's going to allow me to play the game and actually, you know, move the paddle around on the screen. So the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to actually show you where you can set up or change, you know, your input settings. So what you're going to do is you're going to go edit and you're going to go down to project settings and input. Click on that. And over here, in the input manager in the inspector area. You're gonna be able to click on this and remember we're moving in the vertical position. Well, see I said up and down arrow keys and S and W. Those are the defaults. And you can come in and change those and this is joystick and there's also horizontal and that's how you would change or define all of the different things that you would like in regards to input inside of your game. So I once again, I selected the left paddle here, and then I took that script that I just wrote, the move paddle script, and I drug it over into, well, let's just select left paddle, and I drug it over and put it right here. And you can see right there where I'm able to change my speed if I don't like the speed of that. So let's go and save that. And whenever I go to save it, it says save scene. I'm gonna call this main scene like this, and I'm going to save it in my scenes folder. So select scenes, there it is, click on save, and you're gonna see if I click on scenes right here, main scene's gonna show up right there. So there we go, we got everything all set up, and let's test to see if our paddle works. And there it is, and if I press up on the W key, doop, it goes up. You can also see the collision, keeps it from going through the wall, and there it is, it works, all right? So pretty cool stuff. And if you want to shut it off, you just press on that play button once again, and you're back to where you are. All right, so there you go, guys. That was a lot of information getting started with developing and making games using Unity. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to continue on to set it up so the ball works, and I'll show you how to set up the paddle so the AI works, 
and the scores and the music and the sound effects and a whole bunch more. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.